There's only a few places in the scripture where Paul says uh, the things he's writing are commandments of the Lord. He talks about a lot of things. Paul says a lot of things. We all know that. You know, he, uh, he instructs, he enlightens, of course, and uh, may he has a lot of commentary. You know, Paul was a commentator on uh, many of the scriptures of the Old Testament. That's much of what we call the New Testament scripture is Paul's commentary. Inspired, but commentary. His inspired commentary. His uh, scripture and seen in the light of Christ and now with some understanding or with understanding, forgive me any that are offended by the word some, but with understanding, or with the understanding God gave him, but we can agree to that, the understanding God gave him, he enlightened. So in that, instructions, you know, uh, pray without ceasing, rejoice in the Lord, be thankful in and for all things, always giving thanks. Uh, these things he didn't often follow, he didn't follow with, and this is a commandment of the Lord. Now, it's great instruction. Rejoice in everything. Do that. Find out how good it is to come to the place where you are made or you see you are made able to rejoice in everything. These glasses, I'm sorry. I need them for reading. So I'm going to read a brief bit. Uh, usually has some heading with it like, uh, you know, this one says orderly worship. But this is, you'll, be, you'll probably be familiar with it. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophets speak, let the prophets speak two or three. Let the prophets speak two or three. And let the others judge, or let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For you may all prophesy, one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not an author of confusion, or not the author of confusion, forgive me, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under silence, or under obedience, excuse me, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now this is interesting what he says next. He says, what? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it, you, came it unto you only? That's interesting. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? To think perhaps he's addressing what thinks the word of God originated in them and came out from them. But as a received thing, also, are you the only ones that got it? Or to you only, as he says? Or came it unto you only? So what he's saying is, number one, it doesn't orig originate in us or with us, by us, but through us. And it doesn't come only to us, or any in particular. No matter what we may think, <laughs> no matter how Elijah-like we may be, Lord, you know, I, even I, am the only one that remains, you know. I, even I, am the only one that obeys you. I, even I, blah, 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 blah. And the Lord tells him, no, 
I reserved unto myself 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to Baal. So get that thinking out of our heads, out of as he spoke to Elijah. Anything that thinks it's the only one that sees, hears, or the word of God has only come to them in such a special way, they're rebuked. Bear the rebuke, enjoy it, delight in it, because in that you're going to find out the, the Lord has given you companions. And being alone in that, there's no joy. God will even comfort you in the earth knowing you are among companion brothers and sisters. And he goes on. And this is where it comes to the commandments of the Lord. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I write unto you are commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. In another place it says, and maybe I should check the Greek, maybe you should, maybe we should. You know, that if somebody wants to resist this, let him be ignored. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. Now, I, uh, as a man full of opinions, once had an opinion about this, how things should be, ought to be, uh, described as to their being as a thing that ought to be, right? So what the measure was, if this is not taking place, then it is really not a church meeting. Now that's not necessarily true. Nor is it that if there's a lot of activity, it's a church meeting or the church coming together. That's not true either. But what is true, as he says, if any man think himself a, to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. We don't make them the commandments of the Lord. We don't agree, okay, that's a good commandment. This is a commandment of the Lord. This is God ordaining how things are when the church comes together. Not how they ought to be even so much. How they are. How they are. What you will see. What you will experience. What you will know as true when the brethren are gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, where this may not be seen as taking place, cannot be automatic, it can be a matter of ignorance. But where this is forbidden and not allowed, where this is refused to be acknowledged as a commandment of the Lord, that is not the church. That is not the body of believers coming together. We can come together in ignorance thinking one man's in charge. Okay, we, we've kind of been trained by whatever we've been trained by. Some people may think, oh, this guy's got something out for somebody in charge. No, God forbid. Yeah, I've wanted to be the man in charge. Don't, let, don't be confused about that. Yeah, I've wanted to be the man in charge. Then I met Jesus Christ. And he began a work, even while this mind still held some sway. But there's a relief in finding out Jesus is Lord and what that means. What it does not mean is some things are outside of his control and maybe he can handle them, maybe he can't. So when we get past that, it has nothing to do with a knock on anything. But we're not to be ignorant. We are not to be ignorant. So finding that this thing is a commandment of the Lord, it is not how even things ought to be, it is how things are in his church 
as it gathers in his body and his congregations. Okay, plural. We know that there are churches. We know from Revelation there are churches. And he has things to say to each individual one. And there'll be a little bit more, maybe, if God wills. I shouldn't say maybe. If God wills, there will be more. But really, that's the whole of the matter. I don't have to go on. And If this is not taking place, it does not mean that the body is not being gathered. We can gather to some ignorance, fear, after the traditions of man, after the ordinances of man, after the understanding of man. But once this is made clear, we have no space. We have no space if it is refused, if it is ignored, if it is denied, if it is prohibited in any way to then participate in calling it the gathering of the Lord's body. We instead must seek the Lord. What would he what does he say about it? What 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 does he do about it? What does he do? to what denies his commandments. Does he speak? Does he act? The Lord bless you. I haven't sought to put you in a tough place where now you feel you have to do something. Just seek the Lord. But understand Understand, you are free in Jesus Christ to express yourself as the body comes together. Psalm, hymn, spiritual song, revelation, operations of the spiritual gifts. It's not that they should be seen. They will be manifest as the Lord gathers his people together. And what refuses, as Paul said, forbid not speaking in tongues. What refuses, and I'm not making anything of tongues or any of that. I'm not trying to elevate anything. or That's not the point. Forbid not. Forbid not. And yes, some, some wisely see Man, this opens the door to something that could get whatever it could get that required Paul to write about being decent and in order as it's being done. I'm not talking about corralling them into order. I'm talking about what happens, what happened in Paul. There will be a seeking of God to preserve order. We will find, let's put it this way, we will find in what can appear confusion a pressing to even seek God deeper and in greater measure for the handling of all his people, that it be done decently and in order. Unfortunately, and this I will say without contradiction, men have shunned, some men have shunned, some organizations definitely have shunned, in favor of their order, because for whatever reason, and it's not hard to imagine, the other seems, seems too hard to deal with. It's just too much. Everybody, or the possibility at least, it doesn't mean anybody has to do anything, but everyone is free to express 
for the building up of the body. And that is another discipline we learn. What is for the building up of the body? What is just not? For the building of the body, the comfort of all, what is given? Then it's a, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets. The prophet may receive something. He doesn't have to speak it. He may see it. He may feel free to speak it. He may not have to. But there is liberty, praise God. There is liberty as the people of God come together. And anything, anything that would oppose that liberty, anything that would oppose that liberty in favor of what man would consider more orderly. It's better if we do it this way. Well, praise God. The judge is near even at the door. Bless you.